Hello friends, uh, we are talking about ankle arthroscopy. So ankle arthroscopy, if you talk, you can do it ankle arthroscopy in two ways. One is an anterior ankle arthroscopy. So one is an anterior and the other one is a posterior. There is another approach which is described, it is a medial approach, it is on the middle side and you approach both the sides together. But this is not nowadays recommended. So the most common procedures that we do with arthroscopy is either an anterior ankle arthroscopy and or a posterior ankle arthroscopy. Now when to do an anterior arthroscopy and when to do a posterior arthroscopy. Normally if this is your talus, so if this is your talus, you can almost achieve approximately uh, here to here, that is the anterior, 60% exposure with anterior ankle arthroscopy. For the last 40%, it is better that you do a posterior ankle arthroscopy. I am talking about talus, pure talus. So if you have a lesion on the talus, so what is the most common location of the OCD of the talus? OCD of talus uh, it can be either antemedial or posterior so you if that is in the anterior quadrant this area you can approach with the anterior if it is very posterior then only you need to do a posterior ankle so by and large ankle pathologies talar joint pathologies and tibial plafond pathologies you can address with an anterior ankle another uh, another thing that you can another pathology that you can approach with an anterior ankle arthroscopy which is very common is an anterior ankle impingement. What is an anterior ankle impingement? So you have a tibia here and then there is a spur here. So there can be a formation of the spur of the anterior part of the tibia. So that is a tibial anterior tibial spur. So you can remove that spur. So that is a, that is a treatment for anterior ankle impingement. And these patients will have painful dorsiflexion. So this is a classical finding. Anterior ankle impingement, painful dorsiflexion to the patient and you can do an arthroscopy and then you can re uh, remove this spur. Okay. Now for anterior ankle arthroscopy, uh, you can do it either in supine position. Uh, there are two techniques described. Traction may, be, may or may not be required. What I personally do is I usually do it in a supine position. People do it in a hanging position also because the, in that position the gravity takes uh, load and you get a better space. And what I do is I usually pass a, a, a wire or a rope kind of thing and pull. So a gentle traction will usually fine. But more important than tra traction, you need to create the anterior space. So for example, if this is your talus. and this is your tibia here uh, what I want to go is into this this capsular region so this is the capsule by and large and you want to go, go into this region so what you can do is you can do a gentle dorsiflexion and this space will increase whenever you start an ankle arthroscopy you need to inflate the joint with saline so in, in that level okay as far as the pores are concerned the most common portals are medial and lateral so that you save the uh, uh, neurovascular structure in the middle. The important thing is uh, you can use a distal portals also. So these portals which go in the line of joint are more distal than you actually uh, will feel. So this is your tibial plafond so you need to go a little more distal and then you have to go like this. So that way you will be going more into the joint. The other thing is occasionally you can dorsiflex the foot also that will also give you better space of this anterior capsular area. And once you are done into this and then you can use your other portals. A skin incision uh, with a small blade and then you can dilate it with the artery because there are cutaneous nerves here which you may injure. So very small incisions, dilation with mosquito forceps and then you will start. So this is about the anterior ankle arthroscopy. Most common indications are loose bodies, synovitis in the anterior compartment. You can take biopsies here. Anterior ankle impingement and your OCD of the. Usually there are loose bodies here where it is a good case. 
If there is synovitis, you can take biopsies that are good cases. And then OCV, anterior infringement, synovitis. These are classical cases that you need to do with the anterior Now, posterior ankle arthroscopy is actually a very big spectrum. Now, here you don't do only the ankle, but with the posterior, I will say it is a posterior foot arthroscopy. With that, you can achieve many things. So, what you can achieve here is, so what is this? Posterior facet or the subtalar joint. So, this is the talus and this is the calcaneum. Okay. So, you can achieve the last 40% of this. You can see the subtalar joint. So, one, you can achieve the ankle posterior. Two, you can achieve the subtalar joint. The case you are seeing in the morning. You can achieve the subtalar joint. Then you can achieve this area. This is this area has got a lot of pathologies. One of them is called as an os trigona. So what happens is there is a bony fragment here, and this can be pathologic in some cases. It can fracture. So this will be the converse of anterior ankle impingement. So with os trigona syndrome, you will have posterior ankle impingement, and the patient will have pain in plantar flexion. And this is very common in ballet dancers. Those dancers who are walking on the toes, or ladies who are wearing high heels. So, os trigonum and posterior impingement you can address. Okay, and then you can address this pathology. So, you have a TA here, and this spur can be problematic sometimes. So, if there is a retrocalcaneous spur or a hagland spur, <coughs> you can address that with arthroscopy, and you can. Uh, uh, this area, if there is a retrocalcaneal bursitis, you can treat it with a posterior ankle arthroscopy. So, what you do is you go into the joint, you see that uh, hagland, you can remove the hagland, you can remove this hagland deformity, and you can remove this bursa, and thereby releasing the stress or the pressure on the endocando Achilles. Okay? So, one indication is very good indication is a hagland deformity, a spur, retrocalcaneal spur that can be removed with the scope. Then you can remove the posterior ankle impingement or the osteogonum. Then you can go into the subtalar joint and use the subtalar arthroscopy for indications like if you have a condal lesion in the subtalar joint, you can treat it. If it is a very uh, significant arthritis, you can do burring, burring, and then you can do percutaneous arthrodesis. So you can do arthroscopic assisted percutaneous uh, subtalar arthrodesis. And again, as I told you, the last part. You can address the posterior part of the ankle joint also with this posterior ankle and foot arthroscopy thing. Here, as similar to your um, shoulder bursa, so if you do a doing a subacromial arthroscopy of the shoulder, you need to clear the bursa. So here also it is the same. In anterior ankle arthroscopy, you go into the joint and you are into the joint and you are seeing everything. But here it is not like this because this area is filled by a tissue, it is not a vacant space. So you need to clear the space, you need to use a shaver to remove this space, remove this material so that you can see everything. So the first step is creating the space here. This is similar in the shoulder. So if you are doing a subacromial shoulder arthroscopy, you need to create a space. It is not a ready made space. You need to create the space and after that you will be able to see all these structures clear. Here you go into the joint, you are into the joint. Knee, you are into the joint, you are into the joint. Intraarticular shoulder, you are into the joint, you are into the joint. But these are the artificial spaces. You need to create these spaces. These spaces are not the natural spaces. So these are the portals. So you go into the posterior middle, posterior lateral portal. The level of the portal is at the level of the tip of the fibula, at the middle value. So here on both the sides. And if you need to go subtalar. Uh, or a posterior to uh, this or ankle, the direction of your scope will be like this. Okay, straight in. So the first portal you make, you will mark it or uh, guide it into the direction of the second toe or the web space. Okay, so you go in that direction and then the, the other portal you do it under vision. And you need to use your shaver to do this debridement as I told you. Okay, and then you can do, go further. But if you are going to do a retrocalcaneous spur, you need to go just perpendicular. 
with this same portals you need to go more perpendicular and you need to, need to say back of it okay so for these three the direction is straight for retrograde linear it is reverse so it's more more perpendicular to the tissue or perpendicular to the skin okay so this is actually the posterior ankle arthroscopy is actually more common and more relevant anterior ankle arthroscopy you do for the pure ankle pathologies but these uh, hind foot pathologies are very common so posterior ankle arthroscopy also you should have in your armamentarium to treat all these pathologies okay so dr akash will tell me about the zx osteotomy sir i read it yet Why? i found the article <laughs> this morning i just found the article this morning so, so uh, there is I a present if you it is closing wedge osteotomy uh, of the calcaneum sir yes so to manage hagen deformities it's yes, a yes. So, type of osteotomy okay. now what is uh, what is uh, proposed is all kind of tendo achilles pathology the culprit is the length of the uh, calcaneum so if you shorten this length they say that the uh, these retrocalculate pathologies are reduced so this is called as a zx osteotomy so what you do is you close this osteotomy like this and you reduce the length of the calcaneum thereby decreasing the load on the retrocalculate part so anyway uh, i am not a very uh, fan of this if a patient of retrocalculate spar or retrocalculate bursitis come to me i will more do a arthroscopic procedure i will do this cleaning i will remove the spar and remove the bursitis Yeah. so that usually solves the problem this is a more radical and a bigger operation mm. but yes this is in so this is uh, one of the osteotomies which is very common in foot and ankle surgeries and then will be made degenerative like you said like remove the spur degenerative part of the tendon yes that is that is there that is there but what you do is you remove the spur and you remove the inflammation here not only the spur there will be inflammation there so you remove all the inflammation you can use your rf device to Uh, treat all the inflammation around that, and usually that will uh, solve the problem. So, while trying for the posterior scopy, so how to prevent the neurovascular structure damage? So, posterior ankle arthroscopy is very very safe structure, safe procedure. Uh, that the portals are very safe. The only uh, only thing that you can go wrong is you go more medially. Okay. So, for that, the FHL tendon is your lighthouse. So, if you are doing a posterior ankle arthroscopy. what you do is you start cleaning this tissue around and then on the medial side the fhl tendon will be doing like this so i forgot to tell you that this uh, posterior ankle arthroscopy can also be used to treat a uh, fhl pathologies so sometimes there is this fhl pathology is there you can also see it with the posterior ankle arthroscopy and you can reach up to the fhl so you don't go medial to the fhl so fhl will be passing below the such a thing to like so you identify it on the medial aspect of your dissection and you don't don't go medial to the fhl if you do that usually it is not a problem and so the posterior portal will be just hugging the margin of the tendon of the yes posterior portal is just uh, like this posterior medial and posterior lateral portal it is just uh, adjacent to your tendon achilles tendon and as i told you this this portal will be exactly in line to the second loop second Second, uh, second two. Okay. Thank you. So Thank the you, first portal which you need is the lateral one. Ah, uh, you can make lateral or middle. I usually make the lateral one, okay. and then middle side from you, you insert your shaver, yes. and you need to clear this bursa, this tissue, yes. to actually see all the structures. So okay. tissue clearance is small, important. And sir, no saline for posterior. No, no. For it is done in saline. For posterior, no, no. Anterior, posterior, both. So we have to for anterior, we have to dilate the capsule first and. Yes, posterior there is nothing to dilate, huh. but you need to remove this tissue. Yes. Okay. So for that you need to use your shaver to clear this wood. Yes, sir. You you have to create a space to yes, do this things. Yes. But if you have to just address the calcaneal pathology for like for England, then I don't need to remove the tissue because then I have to go perpendicular. Okay. Then I would not need to. Then also you will be able to because you have tissue to hang, right? Okay. This tissue you need to excise. Okay. And then you will be able to do. So you need to initially do a shaver and removal of this bursa, and then you will be able to see what what actually we see is a lot of inflammation adjoining the tendon and adjoining this retrocalcaneal spur. So that is the region where it is uh, seen. Okay. Thank you.
So one case I did sir, I was uh, patient was having PBMS. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Yes sir. It was, it was it's a very good indication. It was more on the medial side. Medial side. So I cleared the uh, anti and almost the medial part.